Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program in beautiful San Diego, California this week. The best deals come attached to great professionals. How do you best work with a real estate agent and how is that world changing? We're going to talk about that today with the godfather of real estate and an amazing guest. Brian Buffini is with us today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. If you love real estate and have always wanted to own your own business, listen up. The Real Estate Guys and their panel of experts want to teach you how to go full-time fast in the real estate syndication business. These next few years may go down in history as one of the best times ever to acquire investment real estate. There are deals everywhere if you know where to look and how to assemble the resources. The Secrets of Successful Syndication Seminar will show you how to make big money doing big deals from a team of experts that have syndicated projects totaling more than $1 billion. Don't wait for someone to give you a raise or create a job for you. Attend the secrets of successful syndication and learn how to build a team, raise capital, find deals, and make full-time money in six months or less. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. All the big players use syndication as a way to diversify risk, optimize profits, and earn big money. You can too. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Joining us this week, as usual, co-host financial strategist, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. And the man we call the godfather of real estate. He's been investing in real estate in seven different decades. Bob Helms. Good morning, guys. Great to see you both. Yes, indeed. We're here in beautiful San Diego, California. Always a great place to come. And uh, super excited because our guest today hails from this part of the country. And it just so happened that our schedules came together. And uh, we'll tell you all about him uh, before we, we introduce him. But uh, we're talking today about the role of the real estate agent. We are very very pro-professional. You hear a lot of folks who say, well, you know, you can save the commission if you don't use a real estate agent, or here's the thing, uh, here's how you negotiate. None of that. We are all about loyalty, getting great agents in the market you're in, and sticking with them, because a great agent never costs you money, they make you money. Well, I mean, if you think about it, if you had a major health issue, right, brain surgery, heart surgery, cancer, something like that, do you want the cheapest doctor? Right. Do you want the least motivated professional? Or do you want the person who can charge a premium because they're great at what they do? I mean, at the end of the day, this, price doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting the best, but most of the time, the best don't work cheap. If you think about the amount of money you're going to make on a piece of real estate over the lifetime of ownership, one or two percentage points on the front end is inconsequential. And if that's the difference between success or failure in your deal, you don't have a deal. Well, not only that, you want your agent to have the gumption to get up every day and the incentive to work with you, right? Bob, you sold real estate for a thousand years and there's certain clients that you would be happy to take their call and there's other folks who you see their name on your cell phone and go, I, I think I'm busy right now. I know I'm busy right now. It's just a matter of anticipating who you're going to work with. Your reputation precedes you. You only get one. You need to take care of it. And you need to make sure that the people you pay aren't all about discounting. Discounting is a terrible, terrible burden to pay because you don't get what you think you're getting with people that discount. I want to pay people extra, not short, because I want them to earn it. Such an interesting mindset. You know, I always tell people that you should ask the agent if they'll take less. And if they do, then don't use that agent because if they're going to cave in on their commission the minute you meet them, what's going to happen when they're negotiating on your behalf? Uh, there's a lot to be said for developing great relationships. And of course, this is a relationship business. If you've heard the show a lot, you hear us harp on that. But we're in a business of relationships and one of your primary teammates is your agent. Now, if you're a real estate investor, you may have more than one agent. And that's because you have more than one product type or more than one marketplace. If I'm buying property in two states, then even legally I need two different agents. What you don't want is two or three agents in the same market competing. It sounds like a good idea. I'm going to get three agents working for me and that'll really get them motivated to who can bring me the best deal. That's the worst way to motivate an agent. In fact, you want to develop a loyalty relationship so that you're the one, you're on their shortlist that they call when they get a great deal. You know, I think it really comes down to understanding what the real estate agent is going to do for you. What you're really doing is you're buying into a network. This is somebody who's taken the time to go out into a community and to get to know that community, to build a brand, to build a reputation. Uh, you know, they talk about farming and real estate, the idea that a real estate agent, and anybody listening to this probably has that going on. They're getting solicitations in their mailbox and they're having people knock on the doors and hang flyers and things. And there's people who work certain geographies and they begin to build up their reputation. And after a while, people begin to trust them. And so when it comes time to list their property, they're going to do business with 
with that person. And so if you want to have the opportunity to find that deal, the guy that controls the inventory, you've got to have the guy that has that brand, that has that reputation. And so really that's what you're hiring. And sometimes we forget. We think, oh, we're just going to hire somebody to manage my transaction. Your relationship with your agent is so much bigger than that. That's why I'm really excited to hear from today's guest because Brian is just the king of going out and building that brand and building that network and creating those relationships with a community to where uh, you have access. You know, as a real estate investor, I'm looking for the person who's got control of the inventory so I can be at the top of the list in terms of when that good deal shows up. Well, and great real estate agents bring a lot more to the table than just experience. Experience is urgent, it's necessary, but much more important is that is their attitude. It's where they come from. They're looking for referrals. They want to get them and give them. You only get that on one basis, as our guest today will say. You have to earn it. And it has to be an important part of who you are and how you go about that. If I'm interested in maintaining, keeping a client, I've got to take good care of that client. It doesn't take a lot, but surprisingly, a lot of people never bother to do it. You know, naturally, Bob, I think looking back at the time that we sold real estate together, uh, you just did that. I mean, you weren't trained to go get referrals. You just had a genuine interest in people. You did a great job for them, and they do what people do when you do a great job for them. They worked with you again. They told their friends. They told their neighbors, and you built a referral-based business, I think, without a, a handbook or a training course. Well, if you look at what happens if you're not that attentive and you're not paying attention, it's called you don't get any referrals. As a matter of fact, you do a transaction as an agent, you think you did a pretty good job. But the question happens, now what? Do they call you the next time around? Did you continue to touch them? Did you continue to be somebody who was delivering service to them? And many agents are shocked when they not only didn't get a referral, they didn't get the next deal directly from that right. client. And, and it's just a weakness in the system. And it's so easy to overcome. If you pay attention, you can do all the business you want to do. It's amazing. And the worst thing that happens as a real estate agent is when you drive by a house that you sold and someone else's sign is in the yard. That tells you you're not uh, doing the job. So how is it that you, as a investor, find the right agent? How do you keep the right agent? How do you change agents when you need to? Those are all things we'll be talking about today. When we come back, you'll meet our guest. Many years ago, we had a chance to uh, go to a seminar given by this gentleman. And I had been in real estate already many years. We were quite successful, top 1% of our company but he blew me away with the simple idea of asking for the referral and building the business. Today, Brian Buffini has uh, trained more than 3 million agents in more than 35 countries, and he's going to share some wisdom with us when we come back. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Real Estate Investment Advice right in your mailbox. Sign up for the free Real Estate Guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com. Are you ready to profit in paradise? Hi, it's Robert Helms. And if you think real estate investing means tenants, toilets, and termites, think again. Located just a short plane ride from the U.S., a virtually untouched paradise awaits. The beautiful country of Belize. When you go to Belize with the Real Estate Guys, you'll spend four fabulous days discovering one of the most intriguing real estate markets I've ever seen. With its jungle rainforests, pristine beaches, and 81-degree turquoise water, Belize is one of the most beautiful places on Earth. Plus, it's considered one of the top seven tax havens in the world. Belize property is on the rise, and many experts think the best is yet to come. But don't just take my word for it. Come experience Belize firsthand at our upcoming investor field trip. When you join us, you'll discover the many reasons we love Belize, like tremendously undervalued beachfront land, super low taxes, ease of doing business, and so much more. Get the details at realestateguysradio.com. Just click on events. See paradise for yourself. Click events at realestateguysradio.com, and I'll see you in beautiful Belize. Hi, this is Peter Schiff, and you are listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program, the number one downloaded podcast on real estate investing. We're in beautiful San Diego this week, uh, partially because it's a beautiful place, and partially to meet this man. Please welcome to The Real Estate Guys radio program, the amazing Brian Buffini. How are you, sir? I'm great. Thanks, Robert. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. You know, we haven't uh, seen each other for quite a while. I uh, went to your amazing one-day event and then went to the Turning Point in Monterey, uh, just at the end of our real estate career, if you will, and uh, I have to say that you worked me out of a job. 
<laughs> we, Great. Uh, we, we, took, uh, we took what you taught and really embraced that and uh, did extremely well. And today we don't sell real estate happily. We spend our time investing in real estate instead. But what's amazing, and, and if you will, because our audience, I'm not sure, uh, is clued into what you do, but your story is amazing. You didn't start in San Diego. You started in Ireland. How did you get here? Well, I was uh, born and raised in Dublin, Ireland. I came to America in 1986 on a vacation. I had two very specific goals. I uh, wanted to get a suntan and meet suntan girls. All right. And so uh, I ended up, I'm still kind of pasty, and I married a black girl. So it didn't quite pan out the way I was hoping, <laughs> you know. So I came out here. I was selling T-shirts on the beach uh, down in, off of Pacific Beach, uh, off a cart, actually moving $50,000 worth of T-shirts and sweatshirts a month. So wow. it was pretty good. Uh, so I always like to sell. And uh, while I was here, about three weeks before I was going home to Ireland, I got in a motorcycle accident. And uh, I got broadsided by a car, and I was in and out of hospital for the next two years. About $252,000 in medical bills and expenses. 19 years old, 7,000 miles away from home. And, and, you know, my family was pretty poor and didn't have a lot of money. So I found myself in that spot. And so when you have no money... When you're totally broke, you don't know anybody, and you don't have any discernible skills, the obvious choice is real estate. Yes. And so that's what I did. <laughs> and so I dove right in. And um, while I got my license, I actually, the first home I ever bought, I bought myself. And I had I had no money back in the day. This is 1987, uh, beginning of 87. Yeah. And uh, one-page contract. I used uh, three credit cards, which I wouldn't advise today, but I used, uh, I was a painter's son, so I knew how to fix and work with properties. And I spent $14,822. And the reason I know that is because I had $15,000 on the credit cards. Wow. Bought a house for 106 and put 14 plus grand into it, sold it for 169 And so that was my first transaction. Wow. And after that, that was kind of the path I was on where I later developed a methodology, as you know, for developing referrals as a real estate agent. But I also never lost and have never lost my pension for buying and investing real estate. In fact, when I leave here today, I'm going to go put a deal together. So uh, real estate been very, very good to me. Yeah, uh, you know. It's uh, through within the next three years, I was debt free thanks to both owning real estate and selling real estate as an agent. And within uh, the year after that, I was the number five real estate agent in the state of California. A year after that, I was number five real estate agent in the country. And by 26 years of age, I owned $6 million worth of real estate, and I was selling 100 homes a year. You know, from that point on, that was the foundation from which I eventually built what is now Buffini Company, the largest coaching and training company in the world. And uh, we train not just realtors, but business people all over the world now. So, But it was from that foundation. And I still love real estate. I still train real estate agents. I still own real estate. I still buy real estate. I'm not a big fan of selling real estate. Right on. <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of holding on to real estate. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Awesome. Good stuff. Well, it, not everyone makes the transition from success in a business to mentoring. And, and really, the idea that what you did was successful. Now, how can I share that with other people? So how did that part of the business come about? You know, what happens in real estate, as you know, people go to conferences and conventions all the time because it's it's either that or work. Right. So, hey, there's somebody <laughs> coming to town with a free seminar. Let me do that. So there was a number of conferences and speakers and, and events around. And I eventually, you know, I was the top salesman for Remax, for example. And so they brought me in and they asked me to sit on a panel. Yep. And I would share a very simple process of how I developed trust with my customers, how I exceeded their expectations, and how I got them to send me referrals. And why I was sending 100 homes a year. And all of my business was referral. I had a zero advertising budget. I would finish this panel and there'd be 500 people in the room, and it seemed like 490 of them were standing in line to talk to me and going, how do you do this? How do you do this? How do you do That sounds like me. I, I want to have, I want to take care of my customers. I want to do a great job for people. Yeah. And most do. But the industry was teaching cold call, door knocking. You know, the, the lead trainer at the time had a phrase, find them, fleece them, and forget them. So what I was talking about was somewhat contrary to that. Yeah. And so I did a number, for two years, I volunteered at least one day a month that I would speak whether they were seminar speakers or real estate conferences that I would get requests to do, and I would do that. And it was my way of giving back to the industry. But I'm also a businessman, and after two years, and my phone is blowing up, and people are sending me letters and emails, I go, you know, I think I might do this. Yeah. And I wasn't going to do it on a grand scale. I decided I was going to do it here in San Diego. So on February 14th, 20 years ago, 1996, I held an event 
that I promoted in three weeks. And I just sent out an, a letter, a fax, back in the day, <laughs> right, to all the people I'd done a transaction with. And I said, hey, a lot of times people have asked me, hey, how do I do what I do and so on and so forth. I'm going to come and share with you. And I did a free seminar right here in Mission Valley, San Diego. And 460 people showed up. And it was, it was, it's probably to this day, and we've done over 2,000 seminars. It's probably the most meaningful event I ever had because it was all people who knew me, who I had done business with, and I had established a relationship with. And they were like, I'm here because I've watched you and I've watched you do your craft. I watched you how you treated me. You know, I would send every agent I was ever on a transaction with, I would send that agent a personal note during the transaction and after the transaction. I believed in a cooperating spirit. It was never, we could negotiate and be tough in a negotiation, but it was always about working for our clients and being pros. And so that first event, some of the top pros in San Diego said, man, this you're on to something. And so I gathered a few guys together and we started and we said, all right, maybe we'll do a few more of these. And within 12 months, we were seeing three, 4,000 people every month. Our events were sold out all over the country. Companies came and sponsored the events. I built a coaching program and a training program. And then every time someone had a need, I never said, oh, I'm going to build this product and sell to people. Right. Every time they said, man, I really need help with this. And we'd ask them why. And we'd give them ideas. And we'd give them all of our stuff for free. And then we ended up systemizing it. So today, we have 15,000 members that are in a coaching relationship with us. Uh, they sell one out of every eight homes in the United States, one out of every seven homes in Canada. We have a couple hundred staff up the coast here that are great coaches and mentors and trainers that provide all the resources these folks need. So, you know, it's, uh, I think when you try to provide, you try to make a buck, and everybody should make a buck. We're all capitalists here. But I think when you try to make a buck, you'll end up stuck always trying to make a buck. But if you try to fill a need, you have a chance to build a business. But if you meet the need and then really are genuinely interested in the person on the other side of the need, now you create advocates. And our company grew at one stage no less than 40% a year for 10 consecutive years as today without a single dollar in advertising. We're a $50 million a year business today that has no advertising budget. We have a lot of advocates. We have a lot of people who believe in what we do. It's helped them. And then they tell their friends. I know it's kind of quaint, but doing the right thing in the right way for the right motives uh, produces the right result. You can be a good guy and win. It's what Jim Rohn would call enlightened self-interest. Sure. Right? So capitalists yeah. for sure. But yep. if you're not providing value, and, and I love that. I don't want to miss this nuance because this is huge. We talked at the start of the show about how important the relationship is between a client, a home buyer, seller, investor, and their agent. But it's bigger than that, right? We often say that this is not a business of competition. It's a business of cooperation. Sure, we might go up against each other on a listing every now and then, but more often than not, agents need each other to provide mm -hmm. inventory. Right. So this idea of not only is the relationship with the client, but with the other agent, that's gold right there. Well, it gets to probably three different things, right? There's 1.25 million realtors in the United States. There's another double that amount for the number of people with a licensee. Right. So there's two and a half million real estate licenses running around the United States. The challenge is if you get into the, a transaction, and again, this is, you know, you have new agents and so on and so forth. But if you get into the into a transaction with someone who's desperate, you get into a transaction. Ben Franklin said, it's hard for an empty purse to stand upright. Yes. So what happens then is everything's a panic. Everything's a freak show. It's three days before the closing. A storm comes through. You get the call at 8 o'clock at night. The fence fell down. The fence fell down. They're freaked out. They're panicked. I told the seller I'd pay half. I told them you'd pay the other half. Those are the kind of calls where I go, I'm sorry, I have a bad connection. You know. <laughs> but a lot of agents are coming from a place of desperation. Last year, and the National Association of Realtors doesn't want this coming out, but the average sales agent in the United States last year, it made about $35,000 gross commissions. Now, when they when you get a NAR number, they include broker revenue in there. So if you get a sales agent who gross $35,000 and then has to pay expenses and their broker split and whatever else, it says the average agent in the United States last year took home 20 grand. Now, here's the thing. If you're dealing with someone who's making 20 grand a year and there's a five or a $10,000 commission on the table, they're pretty desperate. And so that's part of the challenge. And so, you know, God's created all people equal, but not all realtors are equal. And what you're looking for are the pros. If you're a pro, you want to be a pro. And, and I don't care. We work with new agents all the time. We have a new agent training program that the average new agent sells 12 homes in their first 16 weeks of real estate. That's a great start to a career. 
but their fundamentals, they're professionally sound. They're taught what to do and how to do, how to, how to serve the customer, how to build a database. When, if you're working for an agent and it's, okay, they're the cheapest, you guys were talking about this, they're the most available, they might be the most problematic. And so that's, that's the agent that's freaked out during the transaction. You want someone who's a pro. You want someone who's a rock. You want someone who says, you know what, Robert, I got to be honest with you. I don't think you should buy this one. I don't think you should buy this one because I don't think you're going to get out of this one. The amount of people I've told in my career not to buy or, you know what, I don't think now's a good time to sell for you based on your needs. You can do that. It's hard for an empty purse to stand up right. The full purse can look someone in the eye and say, you know what, Maybe not now. You know why? Because I'm more interested in a relationship. One of my top clients in my whole life was a real estate investor. And I was, uh, I was, I'm here I am. I'm 19 years of age. I'm doing an open house in a drive-by community in San Diego. Okay. And I'm not talking about pizza. Okay. <laughs> this lady walks in the door. She's about five foot tall, about 250 pounds, a little Mexican lady, Anna De Leon. She has sauce down the front of her shirt. She walks in. I say, hello, how are you doing? We walked through the house. She asked a lot of good questions. Some I didn't know. And I said, you know what? I don't know the answer, but I'm going to find out. I followed up with her. I got her her answers. I wrote her a note to thank her. I followed up a week later. Hey, did you have any questions? So on and so forth. She goes, you, you come to my house. You come to my house tonight. So I go to her house that night. She goes, here's the house I want to buy, a house I hadn't seen. She goes, do you have an offer? Now, I, you know, I had done like two or three deals at this stage. I pulled out the contract. She kind of helps me through writing out the contract, okay? Anna DeLeon bought 10 homes for each one of her grandchildren. Wow. Now, I didn't have the courage until about the third sale to ask her why in the hell she was talking to me. Right. Because I was 19. I obviously didn't have as much experience as sure. She said this. She goes, I go through these houses all the time, and I the cars, a nice BMW in the driveway. She goes, you followed up with me. You treated me with respect. You always showed eagerness. And she said, when you told me that you didn't know the answer, and then you found out the answer, I trusted you. That woman taught me the real estate business. She taught me how to be a real estate investor. She made me a fortune. I, I was actually the executor for her estate uh, years later. And I didn't know how much real estate she owned. But she owned a lot, a lot of real estate. Buying, holding, built herself a fortune. Bought every one of her grandkids a house. She's walking into open houses, and the realtors wouldn't give her the time of day because she was a heavyset Mexican lady with spaghetti sauce on her shirt. Yep. Great, great lesson there. You know, people shouldn't judge, but they do. Mm -hmm. And if you will instead treat every client as though they had the potential to be your best client, mm -hmm. amazing things will happen for you. Well, Brian, you sit in a really interesting seat because you have 15,000 agents across the world, plus people that come to trainings, and that, that's just yep. the members, right? So you kind of have your pulse on what's happening on the agent side. Sure. And as we're seeing huge changes in technology, yeah. potential changes in the market, yeah. you know, conflicting information about where the economy is going, we're in an election year. Yeah. Let's talk about the things that you see have changed for the real estate professionals. Well, I've done 15 major media interviews in the last 40 days. And so we've been on a little bit of a, a blitz for a reason. And because every one of these, whether it's been CNN Money or Money Magazine or whoever else we've done these interviews with, they all have the same, they have two questions. Tech, 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 tech. Right. And the millennials are coming. And the millennials are coming. It's like the Russians are coming. The millennials are coming. <laughs> a great example was I had this interview with a, a gal from CNN Money, and she's just blasting away. She's like, the real estate business needs interruption. The business, real estate business is about to get Uberized, because this was the theme of her story. Okay. And real estate agents are a thing of the past. And by the way, there's 80 million millennials. There's far more than the baby boomers. And millennials don't pay for anything. And she's going on and she has her position. And I'm like, look, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm in this business 30 years, so I'll give you my best. Yeah. But she's blazing away, blazing away. So finally, I said, we were not seeing eye to eye. But so finally, I asked her this question. I go, can I ask, just, can, we, can we stop on this for a second? Kind of stop the interview. And I said, uh, do you own a home? Silence. So I go, hmm, are you looking for a home right now? She goes, yeah. I said, I thought you were. I said, are you a millennial? Yes, I am. I said, are you using technology and apps to search for properties? And look, I go, great. I said, let, let me just walk you through this. I said, I'm just going to give you the top 10 things that can go wrong on a real estate transaction. I go, this is just the highlights. This right. is not down into the weeds. And I started going through from appraisals to the negotiations, to the home inspection, to the title report, to the financing, that underwriters really don't go to heaven, all of these different things. And we go through all of these different dynamics. And I go, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Now, I said, 
you're a millennial. Just to give you a little ton context on that. Millennials represent about a third of the buyers, but they only represent one of the sellers. So can I ask you this question? What you're looking for a home, you want to do it yourself and trust your app, or here's the 10 things that are going to go wrong. I, I did thousands of real estate transactions and something happened on every one of them where the stuff hit the fan. Right. And I go, let me ask you this question, a couple of things. If you go and find this property, you're a millennial, right? You don't believe in paying for anything. What are you paying for? I said, the seller pays the commission in real estate. So I go, where's, where's that to start with? I go, secondly, don't you want someone to hold your hand and walk you through the minefield of all these things that are, are going to go wrong? I go, let me just tell you this. There's a commercial that says there's an app for this. Let me tell you, there's not an app for when the stuff hits the fan and you need to walk through the details of a real estate transaction. That's where you need a person a skilled pro who has knowledge, who has expertise, and has the personal character to care enough about you to put your interests first and walk you through it because they get their jollies from seeing you moving into that home and handing you the keys. I go, that's the deal. And I go, so if you think that's going to be outsourced to some app, I go, maybe. But I said, I'll say this. The statistics don't bear it out. I said, they've been keeping track of for sale by owner statistics since 1970. We have more technology than ever before. We have more resources than ever before. And last year, 2015, was the lowest number of for sale by owners since they kept history. Ever. Since they kept the record of it. Do you remember when the MLS came out sure. and it was supposed to be public yeah. and agents were freaking out because <laughs> we had the book yeah. to start with oh, and then we had the 300 baud dumb terminal yeah. and we had the information and we thought the minute we give that to the public, we're, we're done. This business is over. Sure. Realtors are more important than ever before right. today for the reasons you just said. So yeah. great stuff. We're talking with Brian Buffini today, and uh, we're going to have a more conversation when we get back. Plus, we'll play Real Estate Trivia next. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Live nationwide, you're listening to the Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. All aboard! Registration is now open for the Real Estate Guys 14th Annual Investor Summit at Sea. Imagine spending an entire week with like-minded investors, world-class educators, and real-world professionals. Returning this year are sales legend Tom Hopkins, international developer Beth Clifford, attorneys Mauricio Raul and Jeffrey Verdon, and the author of The Creature from Jekyll Island, G. Edward Griffin. New for this year, commercial mortgage broker and syndicator Michael Becker, personal development icon Kyle Wilson, and Ken McElroy's partner Ross McAllister. And joining us live and in person for his third Investor Summit, Robert Kiyosaki. It all begins February 26, 2016 in Miami, Florida. Visit realestateguysradio.com and click the tab that says Summit to learn more and reserve your spot. This transformational week is like no conference you've ever attended. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click Summit and make plans to spend a week with the Real Estate Guys and an all-star faculty on the 14th Annual Investor Summit at Sea. Hi, I'm Mark Victor Hans. You're listening to The Real Estate Guys. If you want to expand your consciousness, expand your wealth, expand your future, and have more delight and excite in your future than in your past, keep listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program this week in sunny San Diego. Great to talk to Brian Buffini. We'll have more from him and more ideas about how we can find the right agent and how agents can make the most of this industry. But first, it's time to play Real Estate Trivia, your chance to win a prize by knowing today's Real Estate Trivia question, which uh, kind of has something to do with our topic, but not really. Still a fun Real Estate Trivia question. The cool part is the prize. Here's how it works. I'm going to give you a question. You're going to come up with the answer or a good guess and send it to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Trivia at realestateguysradio.com. The first person with the right answer is going to win a copy of Brian Buffini's great book, Taking Care of Business. That can be yours if you know today's real estate trivia question. Last week on The Real Estate Guys, it was our prediction show for the year. If you didn't catch that one, go back and check it out. We asked this, in which country is the average size of a home the largest? And our hint was it wasn't the U.S. The U.S. is number two. The answer is Australia. In Australia, they have large homes. Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. As you heard, Brian's from Ireland, which of course is one of the top 10 countries when it comes to beer consumption by capita. Here's what we want to know. Which U.S. state drinks the most beer per capita? Yep, of all the 50 states, which one drinks the most per person? That is your trivia question. If you think you know the answer or just want to guess, send it to us to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. 
trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Be sure and include your name and physical mailing address so we can send you an autographed copy of Brian's great book, Taking Care of Business. That's today's real estate trivia question. We are in San Diego, California with the amazing Brian Buffini. And uh, this is good, good stuff, Brian. Hey, let's talk about what's happening on the other side of the business, which is that Competition in any business creates a great opportunity for the consumer to have choice, but it also changes the nature of the game, right? Take your business. When we were heading into the hot real estate market back in 05, 06, I remember going to one of your big events. Things are huge. There were a lot of people in your business. Right. When the downturn came, not so many people in your business. So today, what are you seeing from that perspective, the competition and what that's doing for the real estate community? Well, I believe competition makes everybody better. And uh, efficiency gets driven through the market. That's one of the things that technology does. I mean, I'm an American by choice. I'm an American citizen, but I, I bleed green still. So I still have a little bit of a stranger in a strange land perspective. And I see this with Americans particularly, which is a fascinating with technology and almost an abdication to it. Yeah. Oh, my God, this is going to do this. This thing is going to water my lawn and make my, do my dishes for me. Yeah. The truth is the technology makes things more efficient. You know, like you were talking about, the MLS books. Well, now it's on a person's phone with Zillow. I used to be lost most of my career trying to read a Thomas Brothers map. Right. And now I got Siri telling me, turn left, Brian, you're uh, lost. I mean, I think I'd have sold twice as many homes, honest to God, if I'd have had GPS. It <laughs> makes things fantastic. Yep. And there's a neat thing online. If you check it out, it's called The Evolution of the Desk. And it shows the desk in 1980 and the desk today and what, what the efficiencies that technology brings to the table. So what are we watching in real estate? What are we watching in the world? I used to go travel all over the world, get out, get a cab. You never know what you were getting, who you were getting, what language they spoke or where they were taking you. Is it the shortest route, the longest route? And am I going to get mugged at the end of it? Right. So now along comes Uber. Now Uber, they, they do the technology. It's on your phone. They show you the little cars coming. It's a clean black car, yada, yada, whatever else. Now, the Uber driver... He has abdicated the lead generation part of his business to Uber. So because of that, he has to pay Uber 25%. So you have to count the cost. Uber doesn't own any cars. They don't hire any drivers. They don't pay a lot of expenses. They, they generate leads. They've brought something more to the market. That technology has made it better. It's better for the consumer. There are technologies and processes in real estate today that are more efficient for both the consumer and for the agent. So, for example, I'll, I'll give you an example with Zillow. Zillow is uh, for realtors, realtors really have some mixed emotions about Zillow. One of the reasons for it is a lot of the information is not that accurate. Right. You know, they're off by square footage. It's available. It's not available and so on and so forth. But let me share with you this. Consumers love it. Love it. Consumers don't care if it has hardwood floors. It doesn't have floors and marbles. They're just looking. It gets you. Some, the, the folks who, you know, used to be the nosy neighbor, now you actually get to find out, you know, a house you have no business going in because you don't qualify to even drive up the driveway. You get to check it all out. Yeah. Consumers love it. So the Zillows of the world, and there's many of these now, have created far more interest in real estate. They've created far more exposure to real estate. But here's what we found. 92% of people start their search online. 89% of those who start their search online get an endorsed professional. They get a referral. By the way, with millennials, it's higher. People think millennials are different. Millennials are actually more committed to old school referrals than baby boomers. Millennials are the first generation to grow up with the infomercial as part of their DNA. Right. They watched it as children. They're immune to sales pitches. So the old realtor who goes, come into the office for 20 minutes, I need to see you. You're not getting a millennial into the office. Right. You're going to have to meet them at a coffee shop. Yep. The dynamic is, one, they're far more educated. Two, they have a great frame of reference, so they know a good deal when they see it. And then three, they're looking for someone to trust when the opportunity arises. Now, I will say this to you, that I believe the future real estate, and we train 200,000 realtors in the U.S. and Canada alone every year. I, I'll say this. What you're going to see is an increased pressure on commissions. What I actually believe you'll see, it. people have been saying for years the real estate agent's going out of business. The real estate agent's going nowhere. The pressure is going to be at the real estate brokerage level. And it's the real estate brokerage that's getting squeezed. And that's where that model is actually getting interrupted. The old brick and mortar office. 84% of realtors who are affiliated with a brick and mortar office now consider their primary office their home. Because we used to have to come into the office, examine the microfiche. Right. Okay. <laughs> like James Bond. Now I got everything I need on my phone. Yep. I interviewed Neil Armstrong years ago at one of our events. And he said he went to the moon with less technology in the cockpit 
of Apollo 11 than was on my cell phone. Right. So now the technology and the, the speed of the information, the ability to communicate. DocuSign, my gosh, if DocuSign had been around in my early days, my wife wouldn't have known how many properties we would have bought. That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that I had to have a discussion about every time I wanted to buy an investment property <laughs> made, eliminated. But DocuSign, honey, you're on file. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's made things more efficient, made things more effective. You guys did a great job of talking about value today, talked about not getting the discounted broker and so on and so forth. But I would say this. I believe commission pressure is a, is a thing of the, of the future. I think realtors need to have a long-term perspective. If you have listeners that are buying multiple properties, then a realtor should take a look at it as a business arrangement and say, this is a bulk deal arrangement. You bet. Okay. This, if you're a Susie homeowner and you're not buying a home for another 10 years, you know, you, you got to pay the freight. But if you're going to buy a, 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 do a deal with me every quarter or whatever else, we got to look at a different arrangement. Now, I would also say, and, and, and to support what you guys said earlier on, is a lot of times investors are they're watching the dimes and counting the pennies, and they need to because it's you got to be careful in order to make money in real estate. But on the way out, you have to understand that the average real estate agent uh, sells a home for 14% higher than someone selling it for themselves. Right. And so their commission is more than covered because of their ability to promote and market. They're going to get multiple offers, multiple people interested, and more people means more interest. More interest means it sells quicker and faster at a higher price. So I do believe there's going to be more pressure in the marketplace for realtors. It might not be, oh, I'm going to sell it for 3% or 4%. They might be, I'm going to give you $1,000 off, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that, or I'll help with this closing cost, or whatever. But I think the other side is you want to make sure you're working with a real pro because they're going to they're going to make you more money than they than they cost you. You know, in any business, as efficiencies come in and it becomes easier to do the business, then it's fine that the previous model changes, right? Yeah. I don't think there's any objection to an agent saying, "Well, I'm I'm stuck on a figure," right? I mean, commissions are negotiable by sure. law. That's right. And and it's really you go to different marketplaces, there are different practices. We're in a lot of international markets where commissions are ten percent typically. Sure. It's like wow, mm -hmm. and we we often say. Yeah, the, the, just so you guys know, if you decide to buy in this country, you know, typically the agents get paid 10% and an agent will pipe up and say, yeah, and we haven't had a raise in 10 years. Right? <laughs> but if I can do as an agent, if I can do more business, if I can reach more people and if I can do it more efficiently, then shouldn't the cost come down for everybody? Right. Yeah. So it's not it's not getting your you got to get your mind around right. doing more business and having your bottom line increase is more important than what the gross commission rate is. Well, I, I just think the future is this. You're going to see a smaller amount of realtors doing a higher percentage of business. That's yeah. just the way it is. And you're going to see an awful lot of agents who do a very small percentage. That continues on. I mean, when somebody says to me, how big is your market? I'll have consultants come in and they'll say, how big is the market in the United States? And I say, it's 400,000 agents. Yeah. And they go, no, there's, there's almost a million three agents. And I go, no, there's a million three people who with are affiliated licenses, with the National right? Association of Realtors who have a license, but they're not my customer. They're not my customer. My, my target is the 400,000 people who've made this their career, who are solid pros, who get it done, who make a good living at it, and who might need to improve their skills, get better, have a better quality of life. We can help them with that. Now, Brian, I know we do have listeners that are in the profession, and uh, in case someone's interested in finding out what you guys do in terms of coaching and your programs and your amazing live events, what's the best way for them to find that out? Go to buffiniancompany.com. They'll find everything they need to know, live events. We have teams of people. I think uh, I'll do eight live events this year, but the company probably puts on 50. Yeah. And so they, we have a team of coaches, trainers, and everything in between. Our marketing that we provide for agents goes to 1.5 million homes every month. So we, we ring the bell for a lot of people. And it's amazing stuff, I'll tell you. We didn't really get into that part of your business, but if you're in the business, whether you're a lender, a real estate agent professional, even an affiliated person like Title Company, all those folks, check it out. It really did a ton for our business in our uh, last year's selling uh, retail. So uh, great, great stuff. Great to have you on the program, finally. My pleasure. You guys are uh, doing a fantastic job. Thank you, sir. There's Brian Buffini. We're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. More we come back from beautiful San Diego, California. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Patrick from Paradigm Life. I've recently written an ebook called The Perpetual Wealth Strategy. The ebook discusses one of the best investments, real estate, combined with a financial vehicle used by the wealthy, many U.S. presidents, famous actors, athletes, and even Houdini himself. You can download the ebook for free in the resources section on the Real Estate Guys Radio homepage. Don't wait, go download it now.
Forbes rated Memphis the best cash flow market in the nation. And our good friend Terry Kerr at Mid-South Home Buyers has been the premier turnkey rental property provider in Memphis for over 13 years. With an A-plus rating for the Better Business Bureau, Terry has renovated over 750 houses. Real Estate Guys listeners have snapped up hundreds. Discover what these satisfied investors already know. Mid-South's properties are completely renovated with a one-year warranty and a lifelong rental guarantee. They're affordable, well-managed, and easy to own. Perfect for beginning investors and veterans alike. Get in on the action. Contact Terry and his team via email at midsouth at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Simon Black from Sovereignman.com, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Still time to sign up for the secrets of successful syndication. Two fabulous days in Phoenix, Arizona. Go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click events to learn more. Amazing to hear from Brian Buffini. Oh, absolutely. And the guy's an icon in the business. It reminds me the first time I met Tom Hopkins. And of course, Tom's a a little bit uh, longer in the tooth, but these guys are legends in the business. And even if you're out there listening and you've never heard of either one of them, uh, I think the thing that you need to understand is they've affected you. There are people out there who have conducted transactions on your behalf that have been trained by these guys. And what I love in both cases with Tom and his sales ability, and I'm very excited to spend time with Tom on the Investor Summit at Sea coming up, but uh, with Brian and just his whole concept of building your network, working through referrals and taking care of the customer first. All of those things that he was talking about is so powerful because it translates not just into real estate, right? I came out of the mortgage business. Many of my mortgage reps were using Brian Buffini's training. They made me a lot of money. Brian Buffini made me a lot of money, and that's awesome. But, you know, we teach syndicators. You just got done talking about the secrets of successful syndication. And at that seminar, one of the major things that people need to learn how to do in the syndication business, because even though the new laws have been passed and it's possible to advertise, syndication, raising private money, is very much a business about networking. And if you don't know how to network, and it's a skill. Some people are gifted in it naturally, like Bob here, right? But but for if, if you think that it's something that people are just born into, it's not that way. It is a skill. It's a learnable skill. And there's nobody better at teaching it than Brian Buffini. This is what's great is that, you know, when you talk about advertising for syndication, yeah, that's, I mean, we had shows on that, right? That's wonderful. Real estate agents have been able to advertise for a long time. And they have. And who gets the business? Do you pick a realtor by their ad or by a relationship? The great agents who service their clients well, it's not that they're trying to figure out how to get a referral. It occurs naturally. What Brian does is he helps people in that process. You may have a great heart to help people, and you may do great business as a a real estate agent. And those of us that invest in property, we want a great agent like that. That doesn't necessarily mean that they have the skills or the tools to get the word out. It's going to happen. But it can happen much better if you have a program and a system. And, of course, just the fact that we have so much in common. I was just sitting here just thinking, man, we have so much in common with this guy at so many levels. And uh, just a really great opportunity to hear about you know, his takes on the business. Because he does have this perspective of training a couple hundred thousand agents a year and coaching 15,000 agents. That's a lot of agents. There's not a lot of people I know who are better connected to the real estate space. And he's been doing it for years. And the thing about him is that he's so consistent he he has the skills and the tools and he's compassionate but he understands that what makes it work is to deliver you have to deliver what your client needs if you do that consistently you won't have any shortage of business you'll have all the business you can handle So as an investor, as we kind of wrap up, I think there's some things to take away from the show that are critical. One is that your relationship with your professionals is critical. You're the executive producer. You're the quarterback of your implementation team on real estate investing. And you've got to find sharp folks. You've got to find the types of agents that will get up early, stay late, sniff out deals, and bring them to you. That's important. But it's a two-way street. Well, yeah, certainly it is. We talk all the time about how one of the great ways you can tip somebody in your vendor circle, the people who are providing you services, uh, is to give them a referral. It doesn't cost you anything except the risk that you take that they don't do a good job. But if you believe in them and they've done a good job and you want to say thank you, you don't always have to write a bigger check, right? Sometimes it's just giving them the referral, giving them your influence. And that's really the point, right? He talks about teaching real estate agents 
how to, and, and business professionals in general, how to build their brand, how to build their worth, their value by growing their network, the number of people that know them, like them, trust them, and know that they're in the business, right? Well, you can do the same thing as a real estate investor, and you should, because every single service provider that you work with is plugged into a whole network of people that you don't know. And that's all part of the deal flow. That's all part of access to intellectual capital, people who know how to get things done. And it's all part of growing your network because of the six degrees of separation concept. The idea that somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows that person that has exactly got the right answer or the right resource that you need to solve your problem or advance your agenda. So learning how to master the art of networking and building your business through referral is something that applies to everybody listening to the show, no matter what you do for a living, investor, real estate professional, business of any kind. Somebody who's really good at referrals does a lot more than simply give you the name of an agent somewhere. I could pick maybe six agents that I could send you to. What I want is for you to have the outcome you want. So I can't just give you a name. I've got to do enough work to make sure that they have the tools, the skills, and are a good match for you. Also, there's no reason to make that referral. Yeah, so just make sure as you're out there and you're looking for agents and marketplaces that the best place to go is for a referral. That you're going to search out a great agent in a marketplace. And then the other side of it, be that referring person as well. So great stuff. And oh, by the way, Brian's a great guy as well. Hey, if you haven't yet done so, there is plenty of time for you to register for the 14th annual Investor Summit at Sea in 2016. Excited about this right around the corner. But you do have to move. There's time. There's just not a lot of time because we're down to a few cabins. It's going to be absolutely extraordinary. We've got G. Edward Griffin, the author of The Creature from Jekyll Island, coming. Tom Hopkins coming back with us for his third year. And also joining us for his third year, the amazing Robert Kiyosaki will be with us. You can get all the details on our website at realestateguysradio.com and click on events. Big thanks to Brian Bapini for sharing his ideas and inspiration with us. Until next week, go out and make some equity happen. Hello, this is Robert Kiyosaki, and I'm very excited that I'll be joining the Real Estate Guys for their Investor Real Estate Summit at Sea. Join me, join the Real Estate Guys, and I'll see you out there. This episode of the Real Estate Guys radio show is brought to you by Paradigm Life. Powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at BeYourBank.com. Mid-South Home Buyers, low-cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct, asset protection strategies for real estate investors from attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the Resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys Radio Show.